Hi everyone, good morning. It's Margaret Manning here and welcome to Mornings with 60 and Me. Today is Tuesday, it is December the 20th. Counting down to Christmas. Hope you're all doing well. Um, it's a really beautiful time of the year here um, in Switzerland. Uh, the snow hasn't come yet to our town, but there's Christmas um, markets set up everywhere. Um, lots of glue wine, which is uh, spiced mold wine being served and uh, just an atmosphere of, you know, just almost perfection you know you've got this kind of beautiful people are bundled up in their coats uh, the, the the bells are ringing the little choirs are singing on the street corners you know and you know you could say oh this is just perfect but you know we all know that behind every apparent uh, perfect scenario is, is something more than that now before I get started on my little chat for this morning I want to just tell you I'm drinking my cup of tea and I've got a new brand of tea it's called Sirocco and this is white peach which is um, it's just a, a, a white tea with uh, peach flavor so it's really really good it's something new and this is a brand of tea that comes in all kinds of exotic flavors but anyway so this is part of the Christmas uh, uh, time as well you know you go out and look for unusual um, things to, to eat and drink and uh, you know just try to experience life at a deeper a deeper level but you know as I was saying it's it's sometimes all that perfection all that beauty you know the perfect cup of tea the perfect um, you know Christmas song the perfect uh, theater production behind that we know is reality and we know that for many uh, women in our community um, it's not that happy a time you know I mean it, it's the happiest season of the year until it isn't and then we have to deal with um, with reality with our lives and one of our bloggers Sherry Sachs um, wrote a really powerful article I would I would encourage you to read it she kind of took a look at um, you know the situation that we all face at this time of the year and wrote about it in a way uh, in a very positive way is and she calls them foolproof tips to survive the holidays now I'm sure that as you're reading magazines um, these days you're going to get hundreds of stories on how to survive the holidays and um, you know that everyone's advice will come from their own lens it will come from their own experience but I, I just want to take a moment um, to acknowledge you know that women in their 60s have been through six decades of experience you know we've got situations that we have uh, made decisions about you know we've made choices in our lives that have brought us to where we are today and sometimes you know when we are in a situation like the holiday season where everything is like as I said perfect and beautiful it kind of is more glaring you know the things that are on our minds the the challenges the the things that are hurting us are are more uh, vivid and so some of us will be missing people this this year you know there'll be people missing at the table people that we loved, people that we always spent Christmas with, they'll, be, they'll not be here. That's hard. Loved ones are, 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 have to be kept alive in our, in our memories and in our, um, you know, in the things that we, uh, the positive things that we can remember about them. So some of us will be facing family difficulties. There'll be some, there'll be conflicts. There'll be um, maybe hostilities, uh, disagreements. There'll be situations that are not perfect. Perhaps someone in the family uh, has an alcohol or a drug problem. These are real problems, these are real situations and perhaps there's anger or uh, confusion in, in someone that we care about, one of our friends or family. And this is important, and maybe ourselves, maybe one of you is feeling ill or you've got some, a challenge, a, a physical challenge that you're facing. You know, I'm not making light of any of this because it's so deep, it's almost, we could spend a whole you know, day talking about the different things that might be going on in people's lives. But you know, sometimes it's just not that um, uh, pleasant and we have a lack of the energy to really fight it and to, and to come back and bounce back. But we've got some ideas. Sherry's got some ideas and um, even if you're by yourself this holiday, you are absolutely not alone. You may be having dinner by yourself on Christmas Day, but there are millions, literally millions of women around the world and hundreds in our community who are just like you. And I hope that, you know, for the next few days and leading up to the holidays, we all are here for each other and have our little antenna kind of tuned because we know, we know what's really going on and we know when we can be of help to someone. So I think it's important to, this is especially the time, be tuned in. If someone says that they're unhappy or sad, please um, offer help and it could be a simple thing you know just making a phone call or um, just popping around if they're near in the, the neighborhood um, it doesn't have to be a gift it can just be the gift of your time 
So I think that's really important. But Sherry has some ideas, and I'll go through these, and then if you've got some thoughts, please leave them in the section below as we go along. And I think it's really um, a good time to remember these uh, ideas, these tips. First is to be strict with your own attitudes and your thoughts. You know, I, it's hard to be grateful when you're not feeling very positive, but this honestly is the time of the year to be uh, thinking about the things you do have and, the, and that you do ha appreciate rather than the things that you don't have. Write, write that gratitude list. We talk about them a lot. And so just grab a piece of paper, make a, make a list of all the things that you're grateful for. Number one, you're alive and breathing on the planet. <laughs> you have, you know, that is like something to be grateful for, but you're not alone in your feelings of, um, you know, feeling a little bit disorientated. No one's got the perfect family. You know, no one's got the perfect situation, even if they look like they do. Trust me, it's not, well, we don't even need to say that. You all know this. It's not perfect behind the scenes. But do be positive about the things that are uh, good in your life and, you know, acknowledge the things that you're struggling with, of course. Own them, you know, own them and be responsible for your decisions and for your actions. There's no point in blaming someone else, but, uh, but try to be happier and remember the good things. Do something for someone else. This is number two. Of course, we always say this at the holidays, you know, volunteer, do something for someone, uh, help at a homeless shelter, help at a, um, you know, there's a couple of chari well, many charities that do um, offer ways to get together with people who are alone this Christmas and uh, take advantage of it, do it. I mean, just, uh, if you've got a few hours, take the time. You know, and as I said before, it can be something really, really simple. It doesn't have to be a big deal. Make a phone call, make a, make a few phone calls. And if people are busy, they'll say, oh my gosh, I'm so busy, but it's great to hear from you. Great, you did it. You just called up someone. And if someone's lonely or feeling depressed, then you can spend some time if you have a few minutes. So do something for someone else. Another thing that Sherry says is ring the bells that can still ring. <laughs> and, you know, I think that's, you know, we may not have a perfect situation with our living arrangements, our health, our relationships. But hey, let's ring the bells that we can still ring. Uh, she gives a really great quote, which I love. I, I thought it was Hemingway, but I think uh, Le um, Leonard Cohen also said it, which is, you know, there's a crack in everyone. It's how the light gets in. You know, we are all flawed human beings. No one's perfect. And that in itself can be the, the strength. You know, that's those cracks in us, those flaws in us can be where the light from other people, from other positive situations can come in. So, you know, maybe we have to just be a little teeny bit more selfish <laughs> ourselves this holiday season and, you know, just remember the things that are good about us and let the light in. Go ahead and play. Be silly. Do funny things. You know, read some of the articles on our website about women who are just doing completely kooky, crazy things. Um, you know, get that Christmas hat and put it on and just, you know, just smile and be joyful. I think that's important. Go to a theater, go to a, go to a concert, a movie. You know, just do something that is going to make you smile. You deserve it. Now, pamper yourself, of course, is the next one. And of course, we're, some of us are, are good at this on the holidays. I've got my little stash of salted caramel um, ca um, chocolate, which I will get, I will allow myself in moderation, but I will, I'm gonna enjoy it, what the heck. I'm, I love um, my salted caramel stuff and I'm gonna enjoy it some of it over the holidays. Of course, I'm gonna go for walks and exercise and uh, balance it all out. But you know, hey, pamper yourself. Do something that just makes you feel good traditional massage, go and have a, you know, a manicure, a pedicure, or just buy a little jar of beautiful sparkly nail polish and put it on you. Just pamper yourself. <laughs> you don't need someone else to do it for you. But I think it's important to just, you know, watch a favorite movie. We talked about that yesterday. Um, and or our favorite food. Don't begrudge yourself and don't feel sorry for yourself. Just do it. Another thing is to maintain a larger perspective. Now, Sherry suggests you do something called zooming out. And I actually quite like this idea. It's that zooming, zooming back, you know, rather than just be looking right ahead of you at the immediate uh, shortcoming or, or problem, just zoom back. <laughs> Go back uh, in your life and look at everything. Look at the whole picture. Look at how things fit. Uh, remember the fun uh, Christmases, the great New Year's celebrations. Think about the joyful moments that you had in your life. Just zoom out and um, see things from a bit of a larger perspective. And as Sherry reminds us, we're probably an expert at this by now because we all do it. I know I do it a lot. And um, I do it on my birthday sometimes. It's really cool. I just literally start at the beginning of my life and try to remember the first memory and then all the way through 
and you'd be surprised how many tears you can cry, <laughs> but also just how good it feels, good tears, because you know, yeah, you may not have everything you had back then, but you've got a lot more, and that's the important thing. So the final thing that Sherry suggests, and I, I actually do recommend this, is to plan for the new year. Now, I actually have my own, uh, my, my diary for 2017. I bought one already, and I'm already putting in all my birthdays and all my um, things for next year. And actually, I, I, I booked a, a meeting yesterday in February, and it was like, yes. <laughs> I, it just somehow made it feel real that, that the, you know, the new year was gonna happen, that great things were going to take place, and that I now have an appointment, I have someone to see in February. And that's, that's great for me. I, I love that kind of planning ahead. And, you know, I think that in doing that, you tap into your beliefs, you know, what's important to you. Um, if you have a spiritual uh, foundation, if you have a faith, of course, this is the, you know, you would say the, the reason for the season and, um, you know, have a, have a blessed holiday. I, I respect um, people's beliefs and um, hope that it's, it's what you want. Um, you know, it's for those that are, are more spiritual rather than, you know, focused on a specific religion, then use this time to, um, you know, just to find purpose in your life. You know, just use that basic goodness. The, the golden rule is my <laughs> live by mantra, um, how you're going to apply that in your life this year. You know, we have in our 60 years, we have wisdom, uh, we have perspective and we have leadership. You know, for whatever we're going through, trust me, there are young people, younger people in their you know, 20s, 30s and, and older who really um, would appreciate our perspective. They're doing it for the first time, whatever this is that's on their mind. We've done it maybe five or six times. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just able to listen to them, not pass judgment, not try to solve the problems, but just be there and share the wisdom. I just think it's a great way to share your purpose, your meaning in life at uh, this time of the year. So I want to say thank you for being here. I know this is a busy week, that you've got lots planned, and I appreciate you taking the time to be here with us on 60 and Me. And Mornings with 60 and Me, we're going to talk this week about all kinds of things related to the holidays and your good health and happiness. And I hope that you come back tomorrow and join us. And I'd love to know, what, how are you going to spend the holiday season? Just share with us what you've got planned. Let's have a conversation. Read each other's comments and uh, share and like them. What are you going to do this holiday season? Thanks again for being here, everyone. I look forward to seeing you all back here tomorrow on Mornings with 60 and Me. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye for now.